Well, I thought there was a new intro. There is. I recorded. I recorded music for a new intro. We'll try it. You're wrecking the podcast already, and we just started. Jesus Christ. This is going to be fun. Hi, friends. Welcome to the show. My name is Dean, and the voice you heard in the background chirping me, chirping me for doing the wrong intro is uh, my very good friend and co-host, Mr. Lachlan Cross, uh, formerly of the radio, now of the internet can I, and the World Wide Web. Yeah, I'm sure you can. Go ahead. Can I make an announcement? 100%. Yeah. Okay. Today's Thursday. We got a really interesting guest on today. We're going to be yeah. talking about um, talking about cults with Brianna Brown, who was in yeah. one, born into one. Who was in one? She was she for twenty six years, dude. Yeah, Jesus. Yeah, yeah. 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 So the, uh, this is a crazy story, and she's but awesome. She she's is very she cool. Has, she's like a butterfly. She's coming out of the cocoon right now. Woof. That's what she's very doing. cool. Very cool, um, young lady. Now, the thing that I think everybody needs to be aware of is that Dean You're an alcoholic? is a little pissy today. Oh. You're in a bad mood. And am I pissy? I, yeah. I think I am. I Did your girlfriend why. go home? No. Okay. No, I'm just in a bad mood. <laughs> I'm just in a bad mood. You know what it was? I got home. Haven't seen the kids for a couple of days. Boys, men, get home. You walk in the front door and they unload, right? And you see another one this morning. They unload. Oh, and it's like, okay. haven't talked to him. It's like, okay, we got all these problems. We got to update you on all of our problems. And you're like, okay, okay. And then, you know, you, you get up to a late start this morning. You spend like an hour and a half in traffic, that kind of stuff, which I don't normally do because I have tur- I've, I've morphed into a, just a giant baby. Like the, the, the pandemic has turned me into one of those guys. It's like, eh, it's a lot of work to go to the store to get milk. I just don't feel like doing it. <laughs> <laughs> I might just buy a cow and just keep it in the backyard and get it fresh out of there. I get annoyed by little things now. I'm trying to work on that. It's like a major problem in my life at the point. Thanks for bringing it up. Well, I just want people to be aware of it because I'm they're going to see you treating me quite poorly today, which I'm comfortable <laughs> with. And I want them to be aware of where that's where that's coming from. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I already know I'm annoying today. <laughs> my my natural being, which you are yeah. used to, uh-huh. may push your buttons, and people yeah, are going to tune yeah. in. Why well, is, it's why I'll is tell you what pissed me off. Yelling at law, like you're you are tech. You're, you're is, like you're, we do this like once a, once a month, where like we have a tech issue with a guest, and we're going to introduce our guest coming up. She's lovely. Uh, I can't wait to introduce you to her because you, you need a little bit of this woman in your life. Everybody does. And you're trying to help her with a tech thing. And I'm sitting there smiling at you going, you have no idea what you're talking about. And I'm just waiting for you to be done because you're wasting like seven minutes of my time trying to go. Yeah, what you want to do is uh, sit up straight, turn your head to the side and grab a fork. And I'm like, no, that's you don't know, you don't know what you're doing. <laughs> anyway, the tinfoil works time. on the yeah. fork when you wrap it and you hold it up. Sure, it does. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, I'm going to I'm going to turn things around. I'm going to choose my mood. Uh, we've got lots of fun stuff to get to. I'm excited, actually, for today's show. We've got a Neuralink dude today, the first guy to ever have the Neuralink chip implanted in his brain. He's been out it, apparently. We've got that video for you. That'll be fun. Elon's strutting around somewhere going, look at me. I implanted a chip into a brain. Um, it's pretty cool. Wild. If it if it's real, it's super cool. I just don't know if it's real. But that, that'll be the problem. Speaking of real. Really? Uh, you you know what to- desperately don't want Elon Musk to do anything Worthy. Dude, he's done Dude. All, everything worthy, you know, and okay. and I just don't believe you can like kill thousands of monkeys, try it on a human, and it obviously works. Plus, it was just some stupid grainy at home video. Like, if you're gonna show your first neural, that guy, was a little. Yes, I will give you that. I'll get to it. It's a theory. I'll get to okay. it. Okay. All right. Uh, and we've got some unbelievable news about Shohei Otani today too. Yeah. Richest baseball player in the history of the game. Spotless blemish records. 27 years old. Signs a $750 million contract with the Dodgers. Oh, he's in Pete Rose trouble today. Mm. Like, big, big, big trouble. Anyway, all that I'm being said. Translator. Well, <laughs> his translator's in trouble. He's, they're all in trouble. I mean, it is not good. Without further ado, yeah, I want to introduce our first guest today. She comes from your neck of the woods, Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. Spruce Grove. Um, yeah, Spruce Grove. Nice little Lovely Spruce Grove little there. hammock to the um, west of Edmonton. That's right. Now, she makes her home in greater parts of the city of Edmonton. And I came across a tweet this week, as I do. I'm a, one of them flippers. Yeah. And there are things that trigger me uh, that normally don't trigger other people. Religious stuff triggers mm-hmm. me. 
right? Because of my upbringing in the same cult. Uh, that I've never guest. heard you talk about religion before. This is unique for us. It's a, it's a, I'm, I'm busting my religion cherry right now. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> no, I am, I am going, yeah, dude, you've heard me talk about it a thousand times. That so, was sarcasm. If anybody was wondering what that was, I mean, a lot of people listen to this on the audio version, so they're not sure. seeing the look on my face when I said that out loud. A big smile, like, <laughs> yeah, loser. Yeah, I get that. Oh, who's treating who poorly now? You in a bad mood? Do you need some help? I'm in a good mood. I'm in a good it. mood. I, okay. So okay. I'm flipping through Twitter and I see this tweet that catches my eye. And I'm gonna put this tweet up. I'm gonna show everybody this tweet. It's a great tweet. It's from a, a, a lovely lady named Brianna Brown. And she's got a picture of her with like egregiously long hair. Um, she's wearing a crown of roses, she, two three beautiful kids, a bun in the oven, uh, in a family photo, and uh this caught my attention. Uh, what Brianna said in this tweet was fascinating to me. I was a trad wife. That is traditional wife. And I'll get to trad wife in a second. We'll let Brianna break this down. Before it was a trend, uh, it was 2017, 25, a sex doll, pregnant, due with baby number four, prisoner in my house, prepping and serving supper by 5 p.m. with a permanent smile. Sounds like a blast. Kept the children to myself, seen and not heard, cried when I looked at myself in the mirror. It was Brianna Brown. So I tweeted, I'm like, is that really you? Because the, the profile picture of Brianna is like Cosmo, yeah. cool, powerful. And then this this contrasting picture of her as a traditional wife in a cult family in serving uh, for a cult dressed as an Orthodox Christian cult member is absolutely spectacular. So I sent Brianna a note. We had this incredible long conversation where she gives me the backstory of her history uh, she came to the forefront of cult information, specifically in Edmonton. Jesperson interviewed her, and then all of a sudden, City TV and CBC yep. did articles on her. And she has become this powerhouse who wants to help people and tell her story. And she joins us to tell her story today. Brianna, how's that for an intro? Uh, you did well. Thank you. Yeah. Did I, talk, did I get all, all the things? Cult person, 26 years, uh, powerhouse, wants to tell the story, help other people in this cult. How did I do? You did well. Yeah, you got it all. <laughs> we didn't. I didn't miss anything. No. You did good. not. No. Okay. How are you? I'm great. How are you? We're really good. Um. Good. So, so Brianna, you and I had a chat this week. It, 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 go through what made you uh, put that tweet up. Uh, obviously, you've been on um, you know, a bit of a mission. But when did you? What was the name of the cult you were in? First of all, why don't we start there? Uh, uh, the one I was in was called Word of Life Tabernacle. It is under the umbrella of. Uh, Branhamism. Uh, William Branham is the 20th century prophet that we followed and believed in. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't something you joined, obviously. No, I was born into no. it. Uh, my mom was born into it. I am third generation woman um, on my mom's side uh, who was born into it. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, okay, so you're you put out that tweet. That mm -hmm. tweet is not the same person that's in front of us today. <laughs> no, that's not. Uh, I like to say that the person you see in those photos or the photos that I post of my past life, uh, she's dead. Um, she does not exist anymore. She's um, you can't find her. She's nowhere to be found. She's completely dead. Mm. What's a trad wife? I'm sorry. I, I'm going to probably ask some stupid questions. I don't know a no, lot about a, question. really. a trad wife is like, a, it's a short form for a traditional wife, cooks, cleans, stays at home, you know, listens to her husband. Um, you know, it's all trending on TikTok where there are these women who are cooking Oreo cookies from scratch or, you know, Cinnamon Toast Crunch from scratch. And uh, there's tweets going on, you know, you want to go out and see Tend to the Bison and women are waking up and they don't want to work for corporate bosses anymore. They want to go out and be one with the dirt. And <laughs> like... <laughs> Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm like, you know what? I'm going to go to Costco and buy a family size box of cereal and my kids can get the milk from the fridge themselves because we have no time for this shit. <laughs> oh, I, I like you. I, I did it. I, I was married for 10 and a half years. I got married as soon as I turned 19. I was engaged at 18 and I got pregnant uh, three months into my marriage. Birth control was not an option. And I birthed five children in seven years. Um, so I've lived that life. Um, it's so, yeah, it's a good pace. Good pace. Um, I know what that life is. And as much as they put it out on social media and they think it's all glamorous, 
It's not. And as I said in my tweet, I cried when I looked at myself in the mirror. I hated my life, but I couldn't say anything. You couldn't question anything. And your husband's had the say, the last say over everything that you did. Um, I hated it, but I couldn't say it. So when they all, when this life is all coming out and it looks all sparkly and all calming, it's, it's not. No, no, that's, uh, I mean, you standing in a field with your family with a crown of roses and everybody real happy. I mean, that looks nice, doesn't it? But nobody knows what's going on in the inside. Um, and nobody knows what you're dealing with. But what we're talking about today are Christian cults. And you were in one. Branhamism is a sect or a portion of a Christian cult. And there are different versions of them. Um, you're from, and these are, I mean, they go to great lengths to not be heard or seen, right? And separate themselves from society separate themselves from the world suburbia um to for a bunch of reasons and we'll get into what those reasons are but you're born into this cult you knew nothing other than branhamism and the, the values that went into that for like 26 years right like it, take me through that you grow up and you think you're part of the chosen ones that are yes, going to so heaven the right bride, the bride of christ yes so yeah. the only ones so the cult i'm from believe that they are the only ones um, even within the cult of Branhamism, they believe they're the only ones, as we talked on Tuesday. The cult I'm from in Sherwood Park, we were known as extremists within, under the umbrella of um, Branhamism. So I was born um, in 1992, born into it. It's the only life I knew. Um, the outside world um, was, you know, hellbound, going to experience a tribulation. Um, and you, I was raised secluded from it. Um, for the first few years of my life, I went to public school, um, but then in the year 2003, the leader, he shut it all down, and we had to be homeschooled, and we had no TVs. Uh, you weren't allowed a smartphone when they came a thing, unless you were 18 or unless you were married under 18. Um, we couldn't, as we talked on Tuesday, we couldn't even scroll Pinterest. Um, you're born and raised. Women are to be wives and mothers um, from the time you're five. To 16, you're segregated, boys and girls. And then when you're 16, you're thrown into a group called the Young People Group. And your whole purpose is to find your spouse. Um, I, like, there was three boys that I was to choose from. Um, I did. What do you mean? Oh, <laughs> hold it. What do you mean? There were three they boys. Were you? Like, they, they said, here are these three guys you get to pick from. Three guys is, well, is like mean, weirdo joined, Christian Tinder. <laughs> a Christian Tinder. You join the Young People Group with you know, you're those who were born in a similar year. Um, so there was three that were born the same year that I was that joined at the same time. Yeah. So, you know, you, you stick with around your age group. Um, and I, and I ended up marrying my childhood sweetheart. Um, we had liked each other since the time we were eight, obviously got in a lot of trouble at eight and liking a boy. I mean, those are stories for another time, but, um, ended up starting, uh, into a courtship. It's not called dating. Um, and so you you court, you get engaged, and you get married. And it's supposed to be short. Um, so you do, are not tempted um, to touch each other. Um, do you, can, you know, premarital sex, no touching. When you get engaged is the first time you're allowed to hold hands. When you are courting, you have to stay six inches apart and you can never be alone. You have to have a chaperone at all times. Um, and you keep the courtship and engagement short. Sounds to, really romantic. Oh, it is. It's very romantic. And then, and then you're, you're, you get married and you're, you're thrown into this where you're like, for the first time in your life, you're alone together. Mm -hmm. And you know, there's no birth control. I had no understanding of um, a woman's reproductive system. All I knew was that birth control was not an option. And my purpose in life was to bear children. And I was told by the elder that I ended up moving in with when I was 18, what an honor it is to be a bearer, a carrier of God's um, children. And so I remember being married, I think it was for like a month, and I was in my living room and I just started crying. And I was like, what if I can't get pregnant? Like, what if I can't do this? And I remember my now ex-husband said, um, what are you talking about? Like, we've only been married a month. And I was like, but this is my purpose. Like, this is what I've been raised to do. And then I went on to have five kids in seven years, as I said. So there was really <laughs> no issues. But um, <laughs> that was my life. So I became a mom as soon as I turned 20. I was pregnant at 19, had him when I was 20. My oldest is now turning 12 this year. Mm -hmm. um, and I have five. So there, there are 
well, almost, well, I'll just say their name, their ages this before their birthdays, 11, 9, 8, 6, and 4. Holy and crap. I am a single mom 24-7 to all five of them. Um, I became a single mom two and a half years ago. And uh, that has been, that's what I was raised to do. And I, I accomplished it. I mean, I wrote on my blog that I peaked. My life peaked at 20. So when I was kicked out into this world and started to read that, you know, your life is not even beginning when you're 20, I was like, huh? Like slightly I encouraged? Peaked. You're slightly yeah. encouraged by that news? <laughs> I was like, my life peaked at 20. Like, what else is new? And uh, I started therapy this year, and she's like, you are a toddler in all of this, in life mm -hmm. and everything. She's like, you have so much to mm -hmm. cover and learn and experience. So when I thought my life was over, it hadn't even begun this is oh, fascinating man. i i have a question at okay. what point because you're 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 quite open about the term cult mm -hmm. at what point did you realize what you were were in brianna great question i would say probably 10 8 to 10 months after we were kicked out after I started to educate myself. As I told Dean on Tuesday, um, my ex-husband received a call on a Wednesday in March of 2018 and said we were kicked out with no no return. Um, I mean, we why? could have returned. Why were you, why were you kicked out, Brianna? Because, because of um, God's love, dude. God's love is unconditional. You got to kick those people out. Uh, my uh, my ex-husband... Um, I don't want to speak on like his behalf or anything, but there was um, an incident that happened and the cult found out about it and said that they don't do fellowship with a wrongdoer. And um, so we were kicked out and it wasn't the first time. Like I had been kicked out once before due to um, having a meeting my mom. I met up with my mom once who had been kicked out and I was thrown under the bus in the cult and they just said that they didn't know what to do with me. So they had kicked me out for a month before this. Um, so this wasn't my first rodeo, so to speak, when it comes to kick out, but this time it was serious. We were kicked out together. And basically when you want to go back or if you want to go back, you have to go in begging on your feet. There's a whole group of elders and deacons that are in a room. It is absolutely terrifying. Um, it is scary. You hope that you perform right. You cry or don't cry or what do you do because you don't know what their response is going to be. But all you know is that this is the life that you have to be a part of. So you'll do anything to get back. But mm -hmm. This time when we were kicked out in 2018, it threw an adult tantrum, fake tears. I was just like, oh my God, what are we going to do? And then I snapped out of it real, real fucking quick. And as Dean said, I do swear. Um, and I just said, you know what? I'm cutting my hair. Like I went to Pinterest and I found inspiration. Which you weren't like, allowed to be. You're not allowed to be on Pinterest in your cult, right? No, like, and no we weren't, outside we weren't television. allowed to cut our hair. So like yeah. the long hair you see in that photo was a symbol of submission to my husband. Um, so women don't cut their hair as a symbol um, to them. So I had never cut my hair. I had gotten it colored, like, you know, very natural looking streaks. We weren't allowed to do massive hair changes, but natural change here or there we could do. So I messaged my hairstylist with an inspiration pic that had short hair. And I was like, can you do this? She's like, well, I can, but I'm not um, because you can't cut your hair. And I said, no, I'm not a part of it anymore. Like, I want to do this. And then I went to Winner's. I had never put jeans <laughs> on in my entire life. I this, never short, like, is, nothing. This is crazy. And I went into, I just grabbed jeans, didn't know the sizing or anything, went into the fitting rooms and I flipped my leg into a pair of jeans and I was like, this is it. This is the woman that I am going to, that I need to become. And I vowed to myself silently after the tantrum that I was going to, from that moment forward, educate myself in what we were a part of and into what is actually happening in the outside world. And I said, no matter what it takes, no matter what the risk is, no matter what I have to lose or who I have to lose, this is what I'm going to do. And it led me to losing everyone that I once loved, um, including my then husband. 
Um, it led me to the losing of my day home. It led me to the losing of a relationship with my, my mom for two months. Because when I left, when we were kicked out, I hadn't talked to my mom in years. And she hadn't seen her grandkids. And you can't be in that religion. Sorry, you can't be unequally yoked. Like there, there are there are different aspects of Christian faith, specifically extreme Christian religions. It would qualify as cults because of the preventative nature of, you know, managing your social life. And keep in mind, we'll get to this. What else they manage in your life? But the the, the real the real tip is to keep people like you, Brianna, away from anybody who might be able to tell you it's a better life out there. Like you, you need to get out. Right. Well, I mean, as I said on Tuesday, I 100% know it with everything that I am, that if they let, you know, their members actually lean into education and psychology, their entire pyramid scheme would crumble. It would absolutely crumble. No one would be a part of it. And that's why, I mean, the mantra in the cult I come from is education is of the devil. Um, you know, they have their own, they have their own school building. They, they were uniforms. My oldest was in kindergarten there. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, they, they, it's not a commune, so they don't live there. Um, people in the cult live three doors down from me. Um, like they're everywhere. So, you know, they go to the grocery store, I run into them, but like they have their own school, you're there, you know, twice on Sunday, once on Wednesday, the men go to a prayer meeting on a Tuesday, um, they have their own playground, they have their own like barbecues and everything that you need. They have like a soccer field, they have a skating mm -hmm. rink in the winter, everything that you would usually go to in your own community, they've created there. It's a fenced uh community if you want to call it um with three layers of barbed wire compound um, i believe they call those compounds yeah, a compound <laughs> <laughs> which which you know it was my son my oldest son is in soccer and this past summer we had to go and he had to do a little camp and it was in the field that was right next to the cult and you know while everyone else is on the sidelines and it's actually i wrote about it on the blog it was one of the first blogs i wrote you know, the sun was shining, everyone sitting in their chairs, as a, you know, as a parent cheering on their kid. And I take a little walk over to the fence. And it was like, oh, the moment I was once on that side, looking out at kids at the fence who, was, who were looking in from the world on the soccer field. And I would, you know, make fun of them or think to myself, you know, oh my God, they're going to hell. And now I was standing on that side looking in with fresh eyes, with educated eyes as to what was actually happening. I mean, and I have these moments throughout my life, throughout my everyday, and that's why I opened my blog and I write about it and I share it with the world. Mm, yeah, to connect with people. It's called notamommyblog.ca. Here it is. We'll just put it up here. It's fantastic. Born and raised inside of a Religious cult, but at the age of 26, March 2018, found myself kicked out into being into a terrifying outside world with nothing but a cardboard box of religious trauma, kindergarten supplies. What the fuck happened? I love that. that you put a swear in there because if you know anything about Christ the Christian faith, they consider foul language to be a sin. Speaking of sins, the unforgivable sin is unbelief in the Christian faith because the whole goal is we got to convert you. You got to come with us to heaven so we can get 10% or in your case, your cult asked for 15% of your, your salary, right? Of, of every, of every increase that you made. So not even just a salary. So if you sold something, you got, you gave 15%. Yeah. Um, so you, I mean, they kept you poor yeah. um, and you could never get ahead. And I mean, I told you the story on Tuesday. Um, there was one time I was a 23 mom of three, three and under, and we lived in a one bedroom apartment in Edmonton. We had no money, like zero. I think it was even an overdraft if I'm honest. And I could not, um, breastfeed my babies. And so they needed formula and we couldn't afford to buy formula. And I didn't know what to do. The cult rejected helping us financially. And like I said, I had not talked to my mom in, a, in years because she had been kicked out with my biological dad in 2010. And I called her on the way home from a cult service. And I was crying and I said, I know we don't have a relationship. I know that I haven't talked to you in years, but we have no money and we have no food and I can't feed the babies. And she, was, and she just said, Brie, meet me at Superstore, 10 minutes. 
she went and spent like $600 and bought them toys and filled our pantry and fridge and formula. And she promised me from that day forward, she said, I know that you're in the cult. She said, I know all about it because I put you there. And she's like, I know we can't have a relationship, but I will never let my babies or you go hungry. And to this day, she has mm. never wavered from that. But mm. she helped us after like me snubbing her and when the cult wouldn't, even though I gave them 15%, you know. How is your relationship with your mom right now? Uh, amazing. Um, Good. It was it was non-existent. So like uh, when, we, when I was kicked out, uh, the first phone call I made was to my mom. And the first thing she said to me was not hello. It was, you've been kicked out, haven't you? And I said, I have been. And from that moment forward, we have been building a relationship from absolutely zero. Um, it's been six years now, and we are closer than ever. Uh, we call every morning, um, maybe even three times a day. Um, she loves her grandparents, her grandbabies. I never had my grandparents. I never had a relationship with my extended family because they were all in the world. And so to see my kids, have a grandma and I have a stepdad, my mom's partner, and he never had children of his own and he's come into our lives and just has taken the role of grandpa to five. I mean, it's not one, it's not two, it's five. <laughs> and when he was, he had, you know, retirement planned in BC and he was like, no, I'm now a grandpa. I'm now a stepdad to you. Mm, and this God, is my life. This. So he, our relationship, they live five minutes from me. Um, I see them every day. If not every day, if, if we're busy, but typically every day. Um, and, you know, my mom and I have uh, butted heads um, along the way. When I started my first blog, um, she was like, I cannot read it. I have to start therapy because the truth started coming out. And she, it affected her because she was in the cult double the time I was. And through a lot of conversation, through a lot of boundary making, through a lot of like authentic love, um, unconditional love. We are at an amazing place. And I, I don't want to cry. I did my makeup, but, um, I honestly can't do my life without my mom. Mm. It's, uh, we never got along in the, in the cult. It was our, my family life. I was kind of, I just, I stayed silent in my family life. Um, you were told to, right? Uh, you yeah. were, you were, yeah, yeah. And yeah. no feelings, um, seen and not heard. So my mom and I didn't have a relationship. I wasn't close with her growing up. And now, I mean, we are closer than ever. We we cry together. We laugh together. We get mad at each other. <laughs> we we hang up the phone sometimes. You know, mother and daughter relationship. Natural. And uh, it's just in six years we've come so far. And I honestly cannot, my mom lost her mom when she was only, I was only five when my grandma passed away and my grandpa died when I wasn't even born. My mom was only 16. So I don't know my grandparents. Um, so to see her with her grandbabies is something I will never tire of. Um, she loves them to pieces and to give, to have this where we couldn't have it in the cult. Um, there's no words to describe um, how happy and how, I, I don't want to use the word spoiled, but it's just, and I, and I hate the word freedom, <laughs> but uh, it is. Mm. Um, grateful. Yeah. I am beyond grateful. Like grateful just mm. does not seem. Incredibly happy. grateful. Yeah. Super <laughs> duper grateful. <laughs> yeah. It's so, just, you know, the, I love life when people ask yeah. me, you know, when everything, there's so much going on in the world that is awful and, you know, horrific. And I speak out about those things too. But my passion for life mm. is because I survived hell. Can I, can I just, can I just pop in here for a second? Yeah. Brianna Brown is her guest, not a mommy blog.ca is the name of her blog. I come from a very similar background as you, not as extreme. Uh, Christian and Missionary Alliance, Evangelical Christians, Rapture, heads up, 10% tithe, look out, give us all your money. Uh, unforgivable sin is uh, not converting. So the not converted are of the devil. You cannot communicate with them. You can't be unequally yoked, meaning you can't date anybody who is a non believer. 
you can't have premarital sex. Uh, your genitals have to be blessed prior to uh, your union, which is also Hold very on, what's strange. that? Uh, what yeah, they, yeah, so they, they pray slap for your around, sex. Throw some water nah, nah, it? they didn't touch my, my dinger. No? no, no, they didn't. Um, so, like, I come from a, and, and listen, I've let, this is Brianna's story, but I'm identifying with you, and you touched on something, which is that insulated <laughs> version of yourself that was living this life in a cult that was supposed to be loving, that was supposed to be, you know, free of the burden common to man in the secular world. It's nothing but bad there, right? All those things. Then you get out of the cult, or in my case, I leave private Christian high school and I go to university and someone's like, have a cocktail. And you're like, what? <laughs> yeah. It's that dean right. was born. Hey, 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 let's go. Have a cocktail. Yeah, let's go. Have a, go to the party. Yeah, premarital sex. Not bad. It's actually pretty fun. I quite enjoy it. Um, and then you start, and then there's this moment for people, and yours happened at a different age, but there's a moment where you're like, hey, listen, none of that shit made any sense. And the people <laughs> in, the, in this world are so much nicer than the people in that world. Yeah. And by the way, they don't take my inventory, judge me, and I've got nobody to live up to. And there's no such thing as an unforgivable sin. And they accept me for who I am with all my foibles. And they want to help me and they want to have a relationship with me. And they want to. And this is the big difference, Mr. Lachlan Cross and Brianna Brown can attest to this. They want me to enjoy this life experience, not mm. feel like I'm persecuted or if I'm if I'm not persecuted or if I'm not living oppressed, I'm not doing my job on this earth. You're not condemned. Con condemnation was terrifying. I mean, look, I'm, I'm even wearing earrings. I'm wearing makeup. I, you know, I, I'm not wearing them right now, but I have cat eye glasses. I'm wearing pants. I never wore pants in my entire <laughs> life. Um, what was you know, it like watching? Can I ask you a question? What yeah. was it like, like watching porn for the first time? I, 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 I don't, uh, watch it. I know um, you don't, but like the first, cause, cause I remember like, I went, I remember like, no, no word of a lie. But, but if you talk about movies, like movies yeah. with Any sex movie. scenes, yeah. um, it was terrifying. Yeah, you felt the, like the, you were you were committing a sin watching it, didn't you? You felt like you were. Yeah, a sin I mean, the, the whole, I, the, I sought it out on a regular basis. <laughs> the births are terrifying. Um, like I I told you, and I, I'm going to write about it. The first time I walked into a movie theater after we were kicked out of the cult, That's I crazy. thought I was going to murder everybody in it because God was going to strike it with a lightning bolt and kill all of us. And it was because I was not I was not a child of God anymore, and I had been kicked out. What movie so, was it? What movie? It was Deadpool. So I'm like, oh, you know, that I'm is not, a great first movie to come That's right out of the That's a great first movie. Into the you world. need to write about that, Brianna. I, I am. And, you know, my, my title of it is, while Ryan, Ryan Reynolds, Reynolds was turning, it. was while Ryan Reynolds was making men and women drool, he turned me into a murderer. You know, that's my title of it because that's the honest to God truth. Um, sleeping at night, I would wake up screaming. I would have night sweats. Um, going to a store and the panic of running into someone that was there um, was terrifying. You would, you, we would schedule grocery shops and our shopping either on a Sunday when they were in the cult or on a Wednesday wow. when they were there or when we would know that they were doing something because we didn't want to see them. Um, it was absolutely scary. Um, the firsts are terrifying. And that's why... I want to help people. And when I had my first blog, I was receiving hundreds of emails and messages that would say, really? you are helping me live. I've been out of the cult or a religion for 25 years and I've never lived a day in my life. Um, you are showing me that I can live and not just survive. And that's my whole message is there's a whole life to be lived out here, mm. not just survive. And I want to help others do that. Mm. Mm. It must be disappointing, Brianna, now that the kids are out of the, the cult, they're growing horns now. Mm -hmm. My devil, my, my, my devils, my little devils. Yeah. 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 Do they, they have all, trouble? They with all hats? have, they all probably have two pairs each, honestly. Um, the thing that I stop generational trauma when it comes to parenting my children, um, the cult way of parenting is very abusive. Um, so coming out of that and can you quantify that? Can you yeah, quantify that? Yeah, point? Yeah. Because, because I, I, listen, and I, I know where you're going to go with this. Because in those faiths and those cults, faith—it's hilarious word—you um, 
spare the rod, spoil the child yeah. is, is really the, so that's capital punishment uh, yeah. 24 seven, right? Yeah. I mean, by the time your child is 12 to 18 months, they have to be sitting quietly without fidgeting within, with in a three hour service. You know, if they're not, you go and you, you know, spank them. Um, I, we were told my, a nine-year-old, he was 18 months old, and we were sitting in the sanctuary, and he was fidgeting. I mean, he's 18 months old, I mean, he's not jumping up and down. Like, he's sitting down, and he's just kind of moving, just a little like this, a little like that. And we were tapped on the shoulder and hauled aside and said that if we don't get him under control, he's going to be a rebellious teenager because he was fidgeting like this at 18 months old. Um, so hmm. the, the ways we had to discipline – we were kicked out. Of my totally family. realistic. That's a that's a cult that knows a lot about parenting right there. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, they talk about parenting books, and the only parenting book you need is, you know, the Bible and William Branham's uh, way of teaching. Um, so when coming out of it, stopping generational trauma, mm -hmm. I became the black sheep of my family, especially with my mom. Um, because she raised me under that those teachings, and she was raised under those teachings. And I was like, uh, fuck that. No, I'm stopping it. You don't have to like it. And I'll give you three options. You can come to my house and just be quiet. You can come to my house and, you know, help around. Or you don't show up at all. Mm. This is this is my way of running my house now. This is my way of, of raising my children. And the one thing that has changed my life is unconditional love, mm. not conditional. Mm -hmm. And that was a lesson that just opened my eyes to a whole new world. Mm. I didn't know I didn't know what unconditional love was. My love was based upon my actions, what I said, what I didn't say, how I dressed, how I looked, what I made, how I cooked, um, how I mean if my baseboards were clean. Um, you know, I got in massive trouble. Like held in like a three hour meeting because I had laundry hanging out of my washing machine and I had dishes in my sink because it was not becoming of a godly woman. Um, so, you know, now, and I, I joke about it, when I see my laundry in a, in, a, in a pile, it's like the biggest fuck you to the cult. I'm like, fuck yourselves, you know, <laughs> there's more important things in life than laundry. Um, that was the control. I mean, I wasn't, if my ex-husband did not like a certain Southern gospel group, because we were only allowed to listen to Southern gospel music, he had every right to tell me I couldn't listen to it and throw it out of my earbuds or my house. Um, we could not, we had no TV. I mean, we all began to sneak Netflix and things, and we got, you know, in massive trouble. Um, you know, so I started watching a few shows, but then you felt guilty. That condemnation was like, oh, shit, yeah. I'm going to hell. Uh, oh, that guilt is like you, oh, you talk yeah. about Catholic schoolgirl guilt, uh, evangelical cult guilt. It comes with like, hey, listen, you're playing with the afterlife here. Oh, okay. yeah. Oh, yeah. You're playing with your eternal life. Like you're this condemned to hell, you mm -hmm. know, and the, the the threat that was on our heads was the prophet William Branham said he wouldn't. He said he went to hell. I mean, he went there and he came back and he said that he wouldn't wish hell upon his worst enemy. So you're sitting there and you're doing these things. And you're like, oh, my God, like he said, he wouldn't even send his worst enemy there. Oh, shit. That's where I'm headed. I got to clean up my life. And that that guilt, it, you, it carries with you. And you don't want to tell anybody about it because you know you're going to get in trouble. God's not answering your prayer. You can't hear his voice. So you're just like, oh, my God, please. If we're predestinated and I was chosen before all of time, then I'm going to be in heaven. But I'm really sorry for what I have done. Um, and you carry that shit around your entire life every single day. Um, you Brianna, know, yes. Uh, how many people like there's 1.2 million people in the Edmonton area. You live here in Edmonton with me. Uh, I'm fascinated by this because it's just, it you live so with Brianna. That's hilarious. Removed. And you don't know so her. Is she a renter? Is she in the basement? No. She, I I'm so far removed from this life and religion <laughs> and, and, and everything. Um, how many, like what percentage of the population in Edmonton? 700. So 700, but how many cults do you think there are in Edmonton? Oh, like, there's, I, like, there's one in Trey Park. There's one in the north side of Edmonton. And I do believe there's another one, but I know two of under William Branham for sure. Um, what's, the, what, what's the guy where you got to go and you got to stare at his face for a couple of hours every week? Here in Edmonton? Know, 
I, I don't know. Is that yeah, the guy that, that got busted for like um yes. uh yes. Oh, the COVID up. thing? Yeah. No, no, oh. there's a dude in Edmonton that got busted. Uh he's like some kind of European immigrant who established yeah. some weird Christian church where he's no, like it's all about the young girls and you got to stare at them for like three hours to be safe. He's yeah, he's, yeah. he's in trouble right now. They they keep yeah. shutting him down. Yeah. I, I haven't, I don't know about that one, but there's two for sure under William Branham. And I've actually met with um, someone who left the North side uh, church and we talked and we were known as extremists. She was like, we didn't touch you guys. Like you are extremists under this umbrella. So how weird was that finding out that like your version of that religion was like the most worse. extreme version. Yeah. You're like, oh. I, I already, I, I knew that I knew that with, in the cult because we didn't associate with anybody like we didn't do missions we didn't do camp meetings we didn't up until 2003 other message ministers it's called the message is the umbrella it's called um we would have different ministers under the message like come in and preach and then in 2003 that all went away and then you know it the rules came down really really hard um you know my daughters couldn't even wear the, the tulle fabric um, on skirts, they couldn't wear that because it was too much like a dancer. So my daughter, you know, she was my first girl. So I always dressed her up and it was so fun after two boys. I came home that night after that service and threw out all of her two, two little skirts, um, everything. So, you know, she, the girls have to wear skirts over their snow pants. Listen, I, I don't think I have any photos. I don't have those phones. But when I would go snowboarding, I am a snowboarder. I would wear skirts over my snow pants on the hill. And we would be called flying nuns by people in the outside world. We <laughs> had to, like, endure this shit. But they and told you that was good for you, though, right? <laughs> like, in that in the faith, they're like, hey, they made fun of me all day on the ski hill because I had to wear, like, a like a, a Quaker dress over my ski outfit. And they're like, that's good for you. The, the, they're persecuting oh, yeah. it, it, you. It's a fraud, right? Because yeah. we had to wear skirts. We couldn't wear pants. So wearing the skirt over the snow pants was of God. So we would just convince ourselves that we were the chosen bride. We knew that we were the only ones. And this is what God wanted of us. We couldn't wear white. We couldn't have white goggles. We couldn't wear white. White was has a attitude when it comes to clothing and sport apparel. Um, I know. I was sitting with my I was sitting with my stepdad at the recreation center playing. My son was playing soccer. And this this gentleman sitting in front of us as I was telling my stepdad the story, he turned around. He's like, I'm so sorry. He's like, I just need to interrupt you. He said, White is like the most basic of colors. He was like, it has nothing to it. And he was like, I just can't help but laugh at the absurdity of this. And I was like, I know, but when you're in it, you want to do everything you can to make it to heaven. You know, every time communion came once a month, you'd walk down to drink the wine and eat the bread. And you just think to yourself, I'm a chosen of God. I'm chosen of God. I am chosen of God. Um, even though I've like done some shit in the last week, I still am chosen of God. Um, yeah, but that shit might be, you didn't do the laundry or the dishes. Like no, that, that's it, that's it. Or you talked back to your husband or you know you yelled at your kids, or um, you turned on the radio in the vehicle, and I, I you know, I remember listening coming. to Lachlan Cross getting in lots of trouble in Edmonton. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 103, 103.9, you know, would come on, or we would turn it on for one or two songs, and then I would, no, no, like I can't do that. Like it's Southern Gospel only. Like I can't listen to that. So then after we were kicked out, sitting in the van. And turning on the radio and just listening to it, I, I was going to crash. Someone was going to crash into me. God was going to send someone to kill what? me in their vehicle. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. What do you listen yeah. to now, Brianna? Like, have you got a favorite artist that... Um, that oh, you, okay. you... Kelly Clarkson is my all-time fave. I love <laughs> Kelly. Um, and you haven't, you haven't been, like, spontaneously combusted yet listening to <laughs> Kelly Clarkson? I Good for you. Uh, I love, I love saw music from, like, the 70s and 80s. Like, I love the Eagles. Um, oh, yeah. I love the Eagles. Um, I love rock, like, even modern-day rock. Uh, I love a bit of emo. Like, everything. Like, I don't hate anything because I was only allowed to listen to one genre of music my entire life. So now I get to experiment and have an adventure with anything and everything that I want. Um, so I love Kelly. That's She's awesome. probably like my top artist. I'm going to pink this summer. Um, which I'm <laughs> so, I know. 
so excited. Um, I went to Imagine Dragons with my son for his birthday two years ago. Um, like we are just, we go, we go to hockey games every now and then. Um, they got, my boys got hockey tickets for Christmas from grandma this year. Um, so we go, we couldn't do sports, right? We couldn't watch That's sports. That wasn't sports. allowed. You couldn't watch a hockey game. You couldn't watch an Oiler game. No, well, well, I guess it's on television. Sports. You're not allowed to have a TV, right? No, we weren't allowed to have a TV. Um, couldn't have video games. You know, uh, I remember my mom got us an N64, like probably Christmas of 99 or something like that. My dad took it back the next day. It was like, hell no. I remember a meeting when the Wii came out. Yeah. Um, I was on the cult and the leader held a meeting with 18 to 35 year olds and was like, absolutely not. Like we are not doing the Wii, even though it was like exercise. People were just like, we just yeah. want it for exercise. He was like, no, because you'll get addicted. And the same as Pinterest, it's endless scrolling. And in that time, you should be doing something edifying to God, right? Cleaning, dishes, cooking. I remember getting in trouble for ordering too much skip the dishes, you know, because I had to be cooking home to cook meals on the table by five, smile on my face for my, for the husband, because your husbands have a hard day at work. Not you with the kids. That is your God-given duty, right? You are blessed to take care of the children of God. What an honor. So when he comes home, smile on, children seen and not heard, quiet please, because he needs to de-stress from his day. Not your day. Don't talk about, you know, the shit the kids got up to. Um, when he's able to, cause he's the discipline, right? He does the disciplining, you know, if it's, if it's extreme discipline, um, the moms do it up until the extreme versions. Um, that's the life that I lived and, you know, no feelings. I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful. And I, you know, I tell people all the time, I'm so grateful we were kicked out. It was the best rejection of my life mm -hmm. that day. To see my kids, my, my oldest was only five. And mm -hmm. all he remembers, he's like, Mom, we just had to sit for a very long time and I hated it. He doesn't remember much else. That's and I'm good. That's so good. grateful. Mm -hmm. I'm so fucking grateful for that. Mm -hmm. My others don't remember a thing. Um, I love, like, my daughter, like, I have this picture that everyone loves of my five kids. And my daughter was seven or six in it. And she's wearing a crop top. And she's wearing shorts. And I just love that my daughters get to dress how they want to dress and they're mm -hmm. not sexualized. I'm like, if someone sexualizes you, you tell me because I will fuck them Whoop up. Whoop that ass. Yeah. Um, you know, they, my girls got haircuts two weeks ago and they went in and I was like, what do you girls want? Like you pick, you pick what you want. My hair was controlled for my entire life, suffered migraines, was so hot overstimulated but had no idea what feelings were so just had to you know suffer through it and my daughter one of one of them because i have three she took off eight inches she just went in she's like i want short hair I'll, and the the hairstylist they always checked in with me they're like are you sure and i was like listen it's not my hair it's not my body it's their bodies their choice so you. you know have fun with it i do what i want with my hair you have fun with yours. And so I'm giving my children body and agency. Fun. Yeah, you're giving them agency. Yeah. And stuff that I never had. And I will say, I do love being a young mom. Now I've struggled with it because I didn't get to just go to school and have the career. But now I have a career. I just landed my first career role last week. So I'm so excited. What are you doing? What are you, Rihanna, tell oh, us what I you're am the, I am the executive assistant to uh, Yeg media journalist, Serena Ma. There you go. There's oh. the announcement from oh. religious cult trad wife to executive assistant to Serena Ma. The Serena Ma. It's an honor to stand and work alongside with this powerful woman who shatters ceilings in media, journalism, and public relations. She is making waves of change. So in the last three, four years, you've gone from being a trad wife, literally locked in her house, barefoot and pregnant. And pardon the uh, paradox, the dedantic paradox or the, the, the right. analogy, but I mean, you are a baby mill. You were an abused okay. woman in a baby mill, abused by religion, abused by the fam the familial security of what you, the cult that you were in, and you were a baby mill. And now you're like, fuck that. I'm going to take care of these kids. I'm going to go be a woman. I'm going to go the, take care the of this. Nun, the Grey Nuns Hospital, the mm -hmm. Grey Nuns Hospital called me a baby making machine. They said that to me after having all my babies. They were like, you are a baby making machine. And I was like, yeah, that's exactly what I am. Um, 
I, yeah, and now shattering these ceilings. I have worked so hard. I am so proud of myself for how far I have come in the last six years. Um, showing my kids that no matter what life throws at us, we can do this. We you, we can absolutely succeed and thrive. And let me tell you, thriving we are. My kids are excelling in school. They are well loved. They are excelling in their sports. Um, my mom went to pick up my kids about a month ago, and she I think it was the first time she's done it. And the teacher, she was like, uh, "Who are you looking for?" She was waiting outside by the buses, and she was like, "Oh, the the my grandchildren." And uh, they were like, oh, my goodness, we just love your daughter. We just love your grandkids. And coming from what I did, where I was not known, nobody knew me. I was known as a brown girl. My last name is Brown. You know, my sister and I were known as the brown girls. No one wanted to know our name. No one took the time to know our names. To having my children use their voice, they, they listen, when I went to parent-teacher meetings, the teachers are like, your kids are bursting with ideas. They are, they raise their hands, they're a part of the groups. They are not scared, they're not shy. Coming from a girl who was on the lowest status ladder rung of a cult, who nobody knew their name, to where I am now. Hmm. I and I'll never forget my humble beginnings. I, I always say to people, I'm like, I'm just free. Like I'm just free. I literally at night I'm vacuuming and mopping and <laughs> wiping bum but I've come so far we've come so far and my kids have been there with me every step of the way my oldest I've grown up with him um he has shown me what true love is um it's like our journey is something and I just think you know and people are like oh my god you're so amazing and I'm like uh, it's just my life, man. You know, nothing. Can, nothing I, can I say something, Brianna? I, I just, yeah. I just listen. I don't know you. We've never met. I've heard your story. I live in Edmonton. So I, I remember when those, um, w I saw that interview that you did with CTV mm -hmm. and I was like, I remember seeing that. And, oh, and, uh, yeah, yeah I, I remember when you, when you first got kicked out. Um, yeah, you had the anti cult blonde hair in that interview, by the yeah. way. Way yeah. to go. Yeah. But yeah. I, I will say this, and, and, and this is just an observation um, just on getting to know you here. I, and I know that you said that your life started when you got kicked out and you thank, you're thankful for that. I have a feeling that um, the type of person that you are and who you have become, there's no way that that cult would have been able to contain you regardless of what the circumstances were. So I, I just think you're an amazing person and you sound like an unbelievable mom and I, 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 I think you should give yourself a little bit of credit because I don't think it was the cult that kicked you out. I think it was you, you got out and you became this person and that was not going to be, they weren't going to hold you back. You know what? I totally agree. Indomitable. I second that. Yeah. But you know what the other thing is, is that, and I'll tell you this as someone who is smarter than the cult he was brought up in, <laughs> smart people have this ability you know, once they're out of the ecosystem, once they're out of the actual grind to be able to go, yeah, none of that makes any sense. Like, and the other thing was, I don't know about you. I got, when I was out and I I'm apostate, that's what they would call you. You know how to screw them over from the inside out. I thought that had something so to do with, with the, no, that's prostate. It's totally oh, different. Oh, yeah. okay. So, oh, now that makes more sense. Thank yeah, yeah. you for clearing uh, that up. Ah, uh, state. You kept means, saying that. I'm like, why are you always doing that? I understand the full apologetics of that religion, all the cults, the denomination, sex, as extreme as they are. They're all about one thing and one thing only, which is how do we get these people to rely on us? How do we get these people to believe this craziness without yeah. any proof? And on top of it, how do we get them to give us their money? And how do we control them out of that? How do we get them to figure out that we're in charge of them and they have no agency over their life? And I'm telling you something. The parallels that you talk about right now, and I see it in politics. I know you do, too. You see these people coming out of your faith and that faith, that old faith, that whole idea that, no, no, we need the patriarchy to run Canada from now on, right? And you see people that come from the faith that 
you used to share supporting Donald Trump, right? Supporting Pierre Polyev, supporting that messaging. And I've been on this. We need to separate religion and politics in this country with Lachlan for a long time. And he hasn't like he gets it. He too, he's a very bright guy. He totally understands, but he's so far away from religion. He doesn't hear the cat calls and the dog whistles that you and I hear in politics, Bree. And you must now on the outside, you know, when you're on the inside and, and you're at church and they're like, we need this politician to win everybody, go and vote for this politician in Sunday service that? all the time. Oh, I will I will tell you, Lachlan, I I was a Trump thumper. I wow. was we were the biggest Trump supporters. Um, we, I was telling Dean on Tuesday, I remember the first time Trump, the votes were coming in between him and uh, Clinton and the fear of what would happen if Clinton won. I remember <laughs> it was a prayer meeting night and I was over at my ex-in-law's house and we were watching the votes coming in. And Trump was the person in the end time, the book of Revelation. Trump, Trump, Trump. I... I am a I was a Trump thumping extremist. So when I But isn't that what the church told you that he was part oh, yeah. of the second coming of, of Christ or something like thing? that or are you well, chosen not that he's by the God second he not that he's a, like part of the second coming but he is a main character in the orchestrating of the end of the world and the end time events. So yeah, he's, a, he's a big player. I, yeah. I, so he is know. fucking destroying the world that we live in. <laughs> So, so I, I, okay, I see, now it's coming together. Yeah, 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 yeah. When I see and hear these people, you know, who are Trumpers and mega and all of that, and even, you know, Pierre here and what they want to bring to Canada, I have said on Twitter, that is my cult life coming back here. That is coming here. And if we uh, don't stop it, um, mm -hmm. that's what they want. My trad wife lifestyle is what they want for women and that's why i'm using my voice and being like absolutely the hell not so i went from you know trump thumping to over here where people are like oh you're like a, a blood draining socialist and i'm like I, I know what i came from you know <laughs> and and so we were never allowed yeah. to help the homeless the less than, you know, we, we weren't helped in the call, but we couldn't give back. So, you know, every year on November 17th, it's called Bree Day. Um, it was November 17th was the first day three years ago now that I went on my first ever business trip. And so we marked it, um, my best friend and I marked it as, um, Bree Day. So on the first anniversary of Bree Day, um, he was like, what do you want to do? And at first I was like, let's just, you know, dinner or something. Then I was like, no, I want to give back. So every year and it's grown, uh, I go out and I make up bags of items and we go downtown and we deliver them to the homeless. You know, it has a, you know, hot dog from Costco, a drink, lotion, lip, you know, lipstick or lip chap, uh, a winter item, you know, a, a nice scarf, um, so every year it's getting bigger and bigger. And mm -hmm. I remember growing up, driving by, my mom would put up her window and we were scared to walk by them. And now mm -hmm. it's like, these are members of our community. And so I have taught my kids. They, we talk about it all the time. I talk politics with my kids. I talk about where I've come from and what we need to be. And we were extreme racist. I, I hold myself accountable. You know, I was under that. You were brought up to be racist, brought because oh, yeah. that's another oh, yeah. thing in the church, right? It's like uh, they don't they don't like people of color. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, there are um, some indigenous people um, in the cult, but they have to be whitewashed, right? They take away all of their. Um, they cannot use mm. um, sage. They cannot burn. They cannot um, practice their culture. Um, uh, my best friend, one of my best friends in the cult, two of them actually um, are indigenous. And I just remember the whitewashing that happened. Um, so being able to educate myself and hold myself accountable for what I once was and what I once believed and challenging myself and challenging and holding myself to 
what I want to believe in now and what I do believe in now and how can I be a part of the change and how can I help inspire others who came from my background to inspire change because my whole thinking was if I came from that and that's what I was under that there's there's got to be something on the other end of this that's not that yeah it's awesomeness it's called awesomeness it's called freedom (laughs) it's called agency it's called life it's called happiness it's called joy it's called affection and you you touched on one thing and it's the only thing that ever changed my life i'm gonna get emotional talking about it is unconditional love right for your children for your families not being petty not telling them that the way that they act affects you in any existential physical emotional or mental way it is i will love you no matter what you believe no matter where you are no matter what you do i will always love you and i'm telling you as someone that came from that church and a father who believed in corporal punishment, who said those words to me at 14 and stuck to them, it didn't just change my life. It changed my kids' lives. Well, changed sick. my kids' lives. Because my dad was the guy that started to break that cycle of abuse, right? Well, um, and that, that, that's exactly it. And I, yeah. I've told my mom, I'm like, it's unconditional love for you, too. It's, mm-hmm. you know, it's for my kids. It's for you. Um, it's for my kids and that will now trickle down from my kids if they choose to have children of their own and I hope into their children as well. It, like, as you said, it's a trickle down effect, but it mm-hmm. has to start somewhere. And for, for you, it started with your dad. Um, my dad contemns me to hell. Um, so I'm really happy for you that you have um, a relationship with your dad. I don't. Um, <laughs> he, I am, I am hated. Uh, it's okay. Him. I got a lot of other Christian relatives that have condemned me to hell. It's okay. <laughs> but right. I have been accepted Mm -hmm. and shown unconditional love by a chosen family and my chosen family are friends on twitter um i have an amazing group um shout out to all of them (laughs) and uh, they have shown me they've come into my life and i'm like i'm just a brown girl like and i i've talked to my therapist and she's like no like you are deserving because you exist and i'm like Mm. are you sure because i haven't achieved anything and if i don't achieve i'm not worthy so I want to share this with the world and help because religious trauma, religious trauma is not talked about enough. Mm-hmm. It's not understood enough. Therapists, a lot of them can't even help us because they have no understanding of it. So I want to raise my voice with the collective that's out here trying to raise their voice too and say, let's thrive and let's deconstruct. But it doesn't come without risk and it doesn't come without saying to yourself, I have to be willing to lose everything, risk everything, to be the, the be the version of myself I was always meant to be without control and conditioning. And mm. you can't do that. Well, I personally believe you can't do that if you place conditions on yourself. You, you, have, to, you have to open yourself up to the absolute bare nothing of who you are mm-hmm. and say, I'm starting here. What a, you know what? She's Being 26 amazing. coming out, uh, isn't she awesome? I love Brianna Brown. Yeah. Um, I'm, and this is going to be a very cheap analogy, but I remember watching Breaking Bad for the first time two yeah. years ago, right? This is like years after it ended. Two years ago, I'm like, I want to watch Breaking Bad for the first time. And everybody around me was jealous that had watched it. They're like, oh, yeah. So yeah. jealous you get to watch it. For you get to watch time. it again. I, I can't imagine the joy you must experience in your life, (laughs) trying new things, doing new things for the first time at 26 and being on that same discovery kind of talking about music, hearing her talk about music was awesome. I, 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 I say it all the time. I get to experience life as a child, but this time I get to remember everything. I get to remember my first. You don't, when you're a toddler, you know, you forget it. But I get to experience these first and remember them for the rest of my life. And it's honestly, that's why I love life. I am mm. so I am so optimistic. I've been called a beacon of hope and I just radiate joy. I, I, that's what I've been told because I yeah. lived in hell. I survived it. There is literally nothing you could throw at me that would be like, oh, I, I, I can't do life anymore because it's like, the anxiety that I lived with, the hell I endured is nothing compared to anything anyone can throw at me. But bowling for the first time, drinking for the first time, <laughs> pants for the first time, cutting when my When you hair. bowled for the first time, were you grossed out by how disgusting it was like the rest of us? 
You are a germaphobe. <laughs> Not everyone's a germaphobe. It was just, it was, it was the disco lights. We weren't allowed to be under disco lights. That's awesome. Right? So it was like, it was so fun dancing. I, my kids and I have dance parties in our kitchen every single day. My, you know, my, my oldest came over the other day and he was like, mom, I want to teach you how to do the gritty. So now like he'll come into my room and we'll do the gritty together or he'll do like the whole, like, I think it's like an NPC wave to me, you know, and we'll do the NPC, you know, wave together. Um, Listening to my kids sing in the van to worldly music, I will never tire. We we blast it at like 60 volts in our in my living room. My mom will stop and she's like, oh my God, Brianna, turn it down. You can't think. And I'm like, we're not supposed to think. We're supposed to dance. Mm -hmm. um, we couldn't dance. We couldn't we couldn't shake our bodies. Um, jewelry, you know, earrings. My my daughter has pierced ears too. Um, my five year old's wearing a shirt with the Spice Girls on it today. You know, yeah. that was never allowed. Wearing hats. You know, I can wear hats now. It's fantastic. Going into a store and buying anything I fucking want without judgment is amazing. I love you. I love um, you. Too. She's crazy. <laughs> Look at this picture of her. She's looking all – this is her picking up her son the other night at, at the uh, tryouts. Hockey tryouts. Yeah. For this cult mama where sports were of the devil, my heart couldn't swell any bigger. Good luck. Uh, send good luck, friends. He's a little ball of nerves. That's another – Everybody first, needs right? to follow Brianna. Everybody. Oh yeah, dude. Go follow. Uh, not only do you have to follow her, you need to sub to her Substack. We need. Oh yeah, we're. We she's need gonna, her. In she's going to change. The, she's going to change Canada and the world. Yeah, uh, we're going to pull all kinds of people out of these cults. Not a mommy blog. Uh, .ca. Go and subscribe to it. Um, not only do you get to uh, interact with this lovely young lady, she's not just a beacon of hope. You, you know what yeah. she does is she lays that vulnerability out. and She's like, hey, I live this life. Don't be embarrassed to talk about it if you came out of it, too. And it's amazing when you talk about it. Like, you know, sure. Do I get people that make fun of me because uh, I like pictures like this and I po post them online? Sure. Absolutely. <laughs> I retweeted that one, too, though. <laughs> oh, the one of uh, Princess Kate coming back. Yeah. At Easter, yeah. dressed like Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> but it, I love. I I post blasphemous humor all the time. Like <laughs> I. <laughs> I actually on my blog one of my latest posts is I break down an entire like Facebook Christian pity party like I just call them out like I I love it if like look you can believe in it if you want if that's what you want to do if you do Go it don't it. harm me but I have every right to critique it yeah. and to yeah, post you things do. like like Kate coming out, you know, rising from the dead after three days. And maybe that's Jesus's return. I mean, good for him if he is. You know, I Maybe love, Jesus I'm, is Kate. Is that what you're saying? Maybe Jesus is Kate. Yeah, you don't yeah. know. We can't say that. If that's the case, I mean, then uh, Jesus knows. is also now with um, the P. Davidson. <laughs> <laughs> See, that that is my theory That's though funny. i really do hope she's with pete davidson i love that so much I either hope she rises from the dead after three days in the grave or she's with pete davidson i'm very there's only there's no gray area there no yeah. i am very sarcastic i am fluent in sarcasm i love posting blasphemous humor i uh, love okay so i do too else. but i get in trouble for it all the time like I, I have you heard of the sexy jesus calendar no. Oh man, here it is. Here it is. This is a sexy Jesus calendar. I I post pictures. I post these all the time. And I think it's good. I think I think Jesus looks great. There he is shirtless with a couple of fish. There, there he is in a sweet embrace with another doppelganger, Jesus. There's him on a sawhorse making a cross. There's a carpenter. Him, yeah, laying an egg, uh, putting out a burning bush fire, just lay, lounging on the beach. There's him as a lifeguard in the clouds. Uh -huh. There's him with a watermelon, uh, him with a fence. And my favorite, that's a little That one, you use one. that one all the time. I, I yeah, do, I've, yeah. I've, I've used that one, too. Um, <laughs> okay, the thing is, I... My life was controlled by this belief for 26 years. Yeah, correct. Uh, my life was, like I said, I cried in the mirror every night. I questioned myself. I hated who I was. And I would look at myself in the mirror with tears in my eyes. And I knew deep down, I was like, who you see is not who we are. Like there, this this girl inside is not who's in the mirror. I don't know how we're going to get to her. I don't know how it's going to come to be. But who you are right now is not who you are. And 
So that whole belief, Jesus Christ, and I endured abuse at the end of it. I was under it for 26 years, and then a whole other year after that, struggling with mm -hmm. my belief and all of that. So I will post blasphemous humor when it comes to it because I'll I do it for you. Like, I'll do it for you and with you. There you go. Yeah. And so that's my kids. You know, we, I, like I said, I will fight if you, for your religion, if you want mm -hmm. to believe in it, I will fight for that right for you. You use it for you. Don't use it on me. Do not come to me and harm me with it. You know, my whole pity party I broke down was why do non-Christians have to, you know, make fun of us and why are they harming us? And like in the whole piece on Facebook they wrote was like, you know, if you come at me for my belief, I pray for you on judgment day. Consequences coming your way. And I was like, who exactly is harming who here? Like, yeah. I am for you to believe what you want to believe. Yeah. I'm not harming you, but you are judging me. You are saying that I'm going to burn in the pits of hell if I don't believe. You are saying I'm going to suffer consequence. I'm going to suffer on judgment day. So who exactly is harming who here? Yeah. It's not, I'm not harming you. Mm. Your belief, you're putting your harm onto me. And yeah. so I told my kids, you know, you have friends who believe in it and we will support that as long as they're not going to harm you, you know, and they, if you are happy and let me live my piece. life, I'm happy to let you live your life. You know, that's what I want for the world is like live how you want. And that's, you know, feminism is if you want to be a trad wife, be a trad wife. If that is what you want to do, 100%, as long as you're not being abused, as long as your eyes are wide open, as long as it's your choice. It wasn't my choice. That's the difference. My mm -hmm. choice is to be a career woman uh, with as a single mom of five. And I'm eating. And I am, as I said on Instagram uh, yesterday, I am kicking motherfucking ass. I was just hired by Serena Ma. I have a very successful blog that continues to grow. I have five amazing kids that I'm raising on my own and that are incredible. I am kicking motherfucking ass. And all these people that come at me and say, statistic show kids of single moms and you should be this. And, you, and I just say, go fuck yourselves because I am achieving i am succeeding and it's not stopping now it's just we're just going to continue to succeed and my kids see this and i i love it i love life i absolutely love life. i'm going to a bar tonight there you go you know um, go shake it yeah go, shake it. go feel dangerous go feel dangerous tonight yeah go look your best go feel dangerous go shake it up have a couple cocktails maybe a prosecco i don't know what your poison is you might have a couple of screwdrivers maybe a mojito maybe try an old-fashioned you know why because you can I love whiskey. Whiskey is my is my thing of choice. Oh, you're oh, sorry. <laughs> old fashioned then whiskey and bourbon. An old fashioned, yeah. I, I love, I, there's really nothing I'm not a fan of. I'm trying. All, everything is new. There are things that I haven't tried yet. You know, everything is new, and I'm open to trying all these new things. Tomorrow, I'm going to a cocktail birthday party with a bunch of friends that I've met on Twitter. Like, it's just my life is so great. I'm going. You know, I was invited to a birthday party um, beginning of April. Um, I'm going to like the NDP showcase um, of all of their uh, candidates. You know, my life is just so great. I love it. I love living it. I can't wait to see where it goes. And I want to instill this joy into everybody. Listen, I want you to, and we want to help you. So I'm just happy that you spent an hour with us today to talk about your life and where you came from yeah. and where you're going and where you're going is way more important than where you came from. But I where you came this. from justifies where you're going. Yeah, you did. I've been trying to tell you, religion's terrible, especially the Abrahamic faith. Especially no, the I just faith. I needed I needed that positivity. It has nothing yeah, yeah, to do did. with my religion or anything. I it is I remember, me. like I've had moments where I've been anyway, like I've made comments about religion. I, I I have a very vivid memory of saying something on the air one time on my radio show, Brianna, and the the people that owned the company that I worked for were very very religious, and the boss came running up to the window and was doing like freaking out. And I got hauled into an office and they were like, you can't, you can't say things like religion is the plague on humanity on the air. Like they, they were like, they were terrified. And the fear in this person's eyes was like, I was so shocked by it. So 
I'm like I'm coming at this from a very different perspective because I I have no idea how like what you went through because it just it's never been part of my life. So I'm well, fascinated people, by these conversations. People were shocked that it was happening in Shore Park, Alberta. Like it's located right behind the rec center here called Millennium Place. Like it's it's and right it's not a small there. church. Seven hundred people is a fucking big church. It's a and, big. Um, you know, people were like, are you sure this isn't in the States? You know, it's not in a compound. It's not, you know, off to the side. I'm like, no, it's in the middle of suburbia. Right they under our, everyone's not, nose. Like it's right. It's happening right here. And people were shocked. Like they were like, there's no way. And I'm like, no, it's in your backyard, people. It's right here. When you are sitting there watching your kid play hockey or kick a soccer ball, there are kids behind there enduring what I went through. That is what's happening. And it's, and that's why I say like cults are everywhere. It's not just on a screen and someone sharing a cult story that's happening in um, Utah. It's happening in Shore Park, Alberta. It's happening in Edmonton, Alberta. It's happening in big cities. And that's why I'm raising awareness with it. And, you know, as yeah. you were saying about your boss, you know, you can't do that with religion. I, that's where I come in and I'm just like, uh-uh. Like, I speak out about it because I lived it. I know the harm. I'm not afraid to talk about it. Um, I'm a writer. Um, I've done public speaking. Um, I love to do it. And to do. There, I read. I read a couple of your pieces this morning. Unbelievable writer. Yeah, I'm, I'm very impressed. You're, you 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 get a real skill there, Brianna. Uh, uh, thank you. Can thank I you. and can I just kind of feed into that that whole thing? You know, I find that to be the grossest part of what we've been brainwashed to accept as unbelievers or non-believers or secular people is that we're not allowed to talk about religion. We're not allowed to laugh about it. We're not allowed to say, hey, we have a problem with it, and here's why. In, yeah. in, in any corporate setting, to your point, any public setting, like I have been reamed by business partners going, you can't post the sexy Jesus stuff online. You'll upset all the Christians yeah. and they need to spend money. And I'm like, no, that's not why you're asking me to stop posting it. You're asking me to stop posting because it offended you. You, right? And here's the catch is the reason why they take extreme umbrage is because once you start picking at that scab, you realize there's nothing underneath it. And they don't want anybody knowing that. They don't want anybody knowing that they're, they're uh, abusive Sometimes. ideologies. They don't want anybody knowing about the Brianna Browns of the world, how weird they are, the sinner's prayer, the, the tithing. They don't want to know about the Ponzi scheme behind it all. They don't want to know that the elders and the deacons of churches are the people that are minting their pockets with money, telling everybody you got to give us your money. It's a, it's one of the, it's like Amway for your soul. And so it's the like, reason it's, it's the MLM. Of, yeah, uh, it is. It, it's, and it's also when you're in it and you hear this or when you're first out of it and someone tells you like you were a part of like this scheme, it's not easy to take because I mean, for my mom, she was in it for over 50 years. Wow. That is half a life a if, you, if you live to 100 yeah. of like, what was I in? Like, are you sure? Like, I know there's no Is that way. what kept so, you going back and kept her going back too? Is the fear of yeah. knowing that that might be you, right? Um, It was, it's the fear of living. Cause like the whole world, the outside world has been forced down your throats that it's going to burn. Members there pray for you to die. If you leave, Um, you're going to hell. Um, it's a paranoia, to be quite honest. And a lot of people, to find your footing, I, I wrote about it on one of my blogs, finding your footing when you come out of a cult is not easy. You, like I said, we literally, I left with a kindergarten box of supplies from my son's school and all that we knew in the cult, I knew nothing of the outside world. Absolutely fuck all. So it was 26 years old, I have a box of supplies, I'm a mom of four, and all of a sudden I'm sitting in my house thinking, what the hell do I do now? What do I do? My whole life was the cult. Three nights a week, picnics, uh, weekend plans. You're excommunicated from your entire friend group that you had. You can't call them. You can't talk to them. Where the fuck are you going to go? So for a lot of people, um, it is to find your footing. You can't. You, and you don't believe in therapy, right? Therapy was told it was of the devil. Well, because so it's science gonna... and education, right? And oh, education yeah. You're not, you're not turning to that. Yeah. yeah. So there's one of there's one or two options that many of them face. You either go back 
begging, as I said, crying, saying you'll never make a mistake again. You promise not to. You promise to give your all. They give you another chance. Or for many, unfortunately, they take their lives. The amount of suicides is very high. Um, and, and it continues. I That's why when I was on um, Real Talk with Ryan, I sa- he asked me, he said, how have you gone from zero to 100 in literally 60 seconds? Because at that point, I'd only been out for three years, I do believe. Mm-hmm. And I, it goes back to my vow. It just my vow to myself where I said, I don't have one more second to give to this. I If this is what I came from, what's on the other side? So I got pregnant uh, with my fifth baby in October. I joined a pregnant online group and there was a group called Hot Topics and it was women from around the world. And they would just talk about everything happening from politics to like what's happening in their kitchen to their marriages. And I was very conservative. I was very still a Trumper. And I remember like calling out these, you know, lefties and being like, oh my God, you nuts. And then they friended me on Instagram and I'm still friends with five of them today. We've never met in person because they're all around the world. They, those women have watched me from absolute zero to where I am now. And just the other day, one of them messaged me. They were like, watching you grow the last six years has been something out of a movie. Like it has been amazing. If it weren't for those women and that hot topic group, where they challenged my belief. And honestly, it was with an A&W burger. A&W came out with a veggie burger and someone was like, go and try it. You know, you don't have to be vegan. You don't have to be a vegetarian. Just go and try it. It's delicious. And I replied to her and said, go fuck yourself. I am, you know, meat is on this planet to eat. I'm going to eat meat. I'm not going to like eat fake shit. A year later, after I had done more education and deconstruction of myself, I went back to her on the forum. My baby was born at that time. And I said, I apologize. I am so sorry. But that one post changed my life. Mm. It was about the A and W veggie burger and the rest of it. <laughs> well, I don't awesome. <clears throat> the vegan thing, that's where we're gonna part ways. That's another that's cult. Story. <laughs> yeah. So I'm not saying I'm a vegan. They just said that I'm if kidding. you are your vegetarian you know yeah. it doesn't matter just go and try it yeah but i put my foot in the ground and said no meat is here because i was raised you know yeah. william said meat is here to kill animals are here to kill you know for your eating pleasure so i put that out to her and was like go fuck yourself and she was like i just asked you to try it like i'm not saying you, have to- <laughs> you know <laughs> do you know what's amazing though that's such a microcosm for like the things that we see online today specifically on twitter where people from the alt-right or the christian right or the faith-based right look at things like vegan burgers like it's an attack on them on their on their faith right yeah that's what it that's what kids that's how it yeah. felt wow. it felt yeah bad. but i realized and it, it hung on to me like my conscience over it ate me and a year later i went back to her and i was like i'm sorry but that challenge from her where she stopped and she challenged me in my thinking changed everything and wow. if it, it was because i got pregnant with my fifth baby joined that group met these incredible women and they have been with me on this journey through social media for the last six years. And it, if mm. it wasn't for them, yeah. Well, it wasn't for those woke chicks trying to ram a veggie burger down your throat on Facebook. We wouldn't have the Brianna that we have today. Yeah. God, yeah. Can, I, can I, can I ask you a question? And uh, actually I, I want to ask you a favor. Um, Brianna, when you, what do you call November 17th? Three days. Brie Day. So when you have Brie Day, when you're leading up to it, please, can you let us know so that we can find a way to help you? Um, and I'm, I'll am i even go out with you if that's if that's allowed. Um, and, and I'd like to be a She's part of that. She's not a cult anymore. You're just a human. If she wants no, to meet you for maybe coffee. This is something she does by herself or just with her kids that's or something. True. True. If, if yeah. Brie Day is open to the public and, and other people can get involved with your um, with your you know, you're helping out the homeless. I would love to, to be a part of that. Well, if, if, thank if, you. Yeah. My, my hope is we don't, 
my best friend and I didn't know where it was going to go, but he's always said it's going to be something someday. So I would love that. Absolutely. The, the more the merrier, the bigger, the better. Awesome. Um, and now with what's happened in Yeg yesterday coming out from our counselors and the uh, Boyle Street and Bissell Centre, um, support for our most vulnerable is needed. So that is greatly appreciated. So when it approaches this year, I will definitely reach out. Thank reach you. Out. Yeah. Yeah, you're not going to find a better uh, community-minded guy in your city and a, and a more stand-up individual than Lachlan. And it's funny, you know, you came out of that cult which said they were, we're the chosen ones, we're the better people. And then, you know, you realize that they don't feed homeless people and you run into a guy like Lachlan who's just a guy, right? He's just a guy yeah. doing his best, who feels empathy, human empathy for other people. It's really simple to see who the chosen ones really are. Guys like Lachlan, people like you, Brianna, chosen to serve humanity and people, which is what you're doing. I want everybody who's ever struggled. I want everybody who's suffered from any kind of religious trauma. I want anybody who's got PTSD who's coming out of any, any of these issues. If you identify with anything Brianna said, I want you to connect with her on her sub stack. Okay. We've mentioned it a couple of times. Substack for Brianna Brown is not a mommy blog. Uh, you can go and type in your name, give your email address, uh, and it is tremendous. You will get value here because she's an excellent writer as well, uh, and she's super, super honest. Some of her uh, posts are great. Dear me, a letter to my future self. Uh, timing is everything. Without COVID-19, I wouldn't be anything. It's very honest, very raw. Um, yeah, and uh, very this raw. one killed me. There is no greater hate than Christian love. Uh, so please go and identify with this young lady. Um, you know, we're all on this journey to get a little bit better. And it's easy for us to point fingers at all those people. But there are a lot of people that we call those people that need the same conversion experience you've had, Brianna. Well, right? and I, like, I was one of them. Yeah. Uh, that is my truth. I was one of them. I, I'm who you see today, you know, this <laughs> socialist, woke, empathetic generational trauma stopping kind Veggie burger eating <laughs> yeah this this woman you see today is not who i was the, i was one of them and that is why i want my story to help them i want my story to help even if you are like in any way struggling to say there is hope when hope is unthinkable there is hope and if i can be that beacon for you I would love to be. My whole initiative from day one in 2020 when I started my first blog was if it just helps one person, yep. then it's all worth it. And that still holds true to today. So can we have you back on the show? Yeah, <laughs> sure. And if you're going to start a podcast, let's do it together. <laughs> we'll help you with that. I, I, I am so busy right now. I have a podcast. Oh, no, 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 not <laughs> now. Not now. You get through your business and your day and your breed day and your pub nights and your cocktails and mini skirts and <laughs> disco and your hockey games and your concerts. You go enjoy your life. But if at, at any time that you need any help, uh, you know we're here. Love your story. I think, you know, and a very personal for me, obviously, because to a much different extent, I identify with what you say. You stopped me in my tracks this week, and I appreciate it. Uh, and if we can share this story with more people, we will. But, man, oh, man, just an absolute pleasure to have you light us up for 90 yeah. minutes. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Well, I, I hope I did. And I do have to run and pick up my toddler now. She is done preschool for the day. Um, but it was a pleasure to talk to you both. And if I sparked some joy in your life for the rest of the day and turned your mood around, then I've, I've done my job. You have. You did. You have. I was really pissy I, to start this show. So thank you. I was. really appreciate it. Yeah, I was pissy. Well, I, I, hope you're, I hope you're not anymore. And I'm, I'm going to enjoy my drinks tonight. And uh, you guys have a good rest of your day. You too. Talk to you thank soon. You. Brianna, yes. you, Brianna Brown. Uh, not a mommy blog .ca. How much Holy of a trip shit. is she? Huh? That was, uh, that was, that was unbelievable. Intense. Yeah. It was intensity in 10 cities as Mike Myers and Wayne's world says live in Budokai. That was, and I'll tell you something, dude, I've been telling she's, you about this. For she's going to change the world that we live in. She is just by being herself. I've been, yeah. by, uh, dude, what hides behind political rhetoric is what she just ran away from what hides behind the soccer field in sherwood cult. park a cult. Yeah, yeah, like i like i am so disconnected Does that bug you that? because you're there like are you like holy shit this is like in in suburbia in my hometown it well listen i you hear stories and i'd, I'd even heard brianna's story like i said i saw that news 
that you sent yeah. me a clip of something like a news story shortly after she left or mm. she was kicked out and they did a story on her. I remember seeing that on TV, probably watching it while I was having dinner. It just doesn't connect with me because like I said, I'm, I, I just, I have this disconnect with, with religion. I've always sort of felt I've, I've always had a problem with religion. We don't need to go down that path, but I've always felt, I think people need something to believe in. I just don't like the structure of religion and what it does to the, you know, humans. Yeah. I, I, so I, yeah. so to, just to hear uh, that person's story and to know that there's hundreds of other women in the community that I live in right now that are dealing with what she's dealing with or that she dealt with that she's escaped is just unbelievable to me. Like, mm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah. And, and it's everyday and life for what? a lot of we those didn't people. Get right? into, we didn't get into it, Dean, but I mean, uh, the, the, the brainwashing, the, the psychological abuse that she is, she has escaped from is it's remarkable that she is where she is. You see it today. I'll tell you where you see it the most. I'll tell you where you see it the most, the psychological brainwashing from that age, bringing those people up to become warriors on behalf of any political, religious ideology. You see it today when you show up to a parental rights rally. You see it today when yeah. you say you don't like trans people and they're mentally ill. That's what hides. That's the fuel that pushes those conversations. It is the lie that is told to these brainwashed people and you got to go and fight for us out there politically. Now there are different versions of that and denominations of Christian. Yeah, sect, yeah, right. Yeah. So not all of them are as extreme. Not all I of think them are more than wacky. anything. What people are dealing with, if they're involved in something like that is this idea that if um, they will lose everything that they have, their community that they have, regardless of how dysfunctional it is. Yeah. And then this other sort of, this other side of the coin that Brianna painted a picture of is this control. And that control is, is based in money, right? Somebody is profiting from this and this ability that they have to control these people's lives benefits them financially, um, which is, makes it even sadder. The, the dude that I'm trying to think his name, the dude that runs that church that she left. I can't remember his name. I had it here. Terry Sproul. I think his name is. Yeah. Um, Multi-millionaire. Everybody else in that church that has to give 15% of everything they make and then every 15% of every increase. Yeah. Poor as fuck. And so yeah. when you leave people poor as fuck and they're on the dole for your community and their money and their food yeah, and, and their, their daily rigidity, their operating system, you, you're, it's a cult. It is an abusive, shitty, awful cult. That is based, as you pointed out, on one thing, one thing only, going out and converting other people to come in with their bank cards and their cash so they can put them in the envelope every Sunday or Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday. Sometimes you go to church like five, six days a week. And then they become radicalized people because you know what they attach to it. You heard her say it. And this is the thing that bothers me the most about any kind of overt religious person in politics is they swear an oath that stands above everything they're willing to ruin their entire life for. And they're also willing to stay ignorant. As you pointed, as she pointed out, we're not educated in the world. We're not taught math, science, world history, none of that shit. None of it. None of it. Yeah. And so you've got people that are just out there doing damage to this country through politics, but that's where it starts. Anyway, fascinating. Brianna Brown, Jeez. really appreciate her coming. Go awesome. follow her. Yeah. She's incredible. Anyway, time for the locker room retro replay of the day. Lachlan Cross and his group of Misfits, legendary radio show. What do we have for us today, sir? Today, we'll give you a little bit of an insight into the relationship that I have with my beautiful wife. And this is brought to you by Arden Roof Systems, the locker room retro replay of the day. The locker, the locker room, room retro, retro replay. 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 Grant, I'll get you to read the post, okay? okay? This so, is what I put up on Facebook yesterday. Lachlan Cross updates his Facebook status and writes, I'm doing something right now that'll make a lot of people in my life very happy. Vague booking. <laughs> so everyone was commenting like therapy, yeah. showering, stuff like that. Anger management. No one guessed. Here's the audio of me telling my wife what I was doing yesterday. Okay, here it is. I had my hearing test today. How did that go? Good. 
she was telling me that um, in some situations, like long-term relationships, women will alter. This is a bullshit story. They will alter <laughs> the register of their voices. This is a bullshit story. In an effort to. This is a bullshit story. To uh, to drive their men crazy, so that it. It's probably you. I knew it was bullshit. It's not me. By the time you said the second sentence. So my hearing's perfect. Perfect, what yeah. What did they actually say? This is your problem. I need... What did they actually say? I need hearing aids. What? Yay! Do you actually? Do you actually? A couple months ago, you tried to tell us you had perfect hearing, and your wife overheard it. She was like, "You whoa, are you kidding me?" <laughs> I, to be fair, it's not an old age thing. This is I probably needed hearing aids years ago. <laughs> I had some major hearing damage when I was a kid. Are you going to get them? So, no. So, so is what you're saying is you're not always ignoring us just for the sake of ignoring us. You just can't hear us. <laughs> no, I can't I know hear a couple you. signs I can do for you. <laughs> Don't need, do that sign. Again. You need you need to learn how to read lips. <laughs> <laughs> she, this is you guys are gonna love this part. So it, after she did the hearing test, she started asking me a bunch of questions about my past and asked me if I had ever been diagnosed with ADHD. <laughs> <laughs> that was the I was being diagnosed by my hearing technician. <laughs> I, I loved her reaction. I loved Deb's reaction. That's a bullshit story. She knew right That's away. A bullshit story over and over. Well, of course, she knew it right away. She's like, I just came from the doctor. I started said, it's all recording. Too. As soon as we got in the car, I start, I hit record on my phone just to make sure to get a reaction because I was going to was gonna tell her that it was her fault that my hearing was fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's a good thing she's like 100 Here's the thing, times smarter than My wife than you. is at work today. Yeah. And, and listen, I admit, I, I had really bad, I was a really sick kid until I got my tonsils out. I had bad, yeah. bad fevers when I was mm -hmm. a kid. And um, I've got 30% hearing loss in one ear and 15% hearing loss in another ear. And over time, it's gotten worse, obviously, because mm -hmm. I'm in my 50s now. Oh, yeah, you're old. But my wife, and this is something that I've tried to hint at, like she has had a problem with my hearing for years and brings it up on a fairly regular basis. Mm -hmm. But the old bird also hers is starting to slip and trust me guess how that goes over that? when i mention I that one? i love that yeah like ah you know all what you have I to do is start mumbling on purpose <laughs> all you have to do to make her go crazy this is this i is love like, my wife but yeah, i know this is geriatric gaslighting losing her fucking yeah hair. yeah dude gaslight her gaslight away Geriatric gaslighting. That's what you call. So you just walk by her and go, hey, Deb. Yeah. No, 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 no. <laughs> yeah. Why is Locke not here today? Well, hey, Deb. Yeah, honey. I just want to. Hmm. What's that? You can't hear me. You need a hearing aids. <laughs> Look who's going deaf, too. <laughs> I'll let you know how that goes. Yeah, do. I know you won't do it. Oh shit, that's Good. funny. All right. Um, we should sign off because this has been a long one. That yeah, was hour and a I'm half. glad we did that though. I'm glad. I'm glad I we too. did. We've got a couple of shows tomorrow. Obviously, we got one in the morning with your boy Stacy Disatel, our new friend at Arden Roofing Systems. We're gonna talk about his golf term. We can talk about you. We'll talk about business. Uh, so we'll get to the show high Otani news tomorrow. Yeah, uh, which is big news. Like it's Pete Rose esque. Yeah. Eh, gambling. Eh. <laughs> yeah. oh, also, are you going to watch Roadhouse? The new Roadhouse? It's on I'm Prime gonna watch Road, Yeah, I'm going to watch hey. Roadhouse because uh, Jake Gyllenhaal's in it. My girlfriend was showing me pictures last night. She goes, he looks great. I'm like, doesn't look great. Looks you bad. may have worked out a bit for that role. Yeah, Did you no, see yeah. that? Yeah, so I'm going to watch it on my own. I won't be watching it with her because that'll be embarrassing. Um, yeah. But I want to see Conor McGregor full Monty in that thing today. Oh, He's yeah. yeah I, totally I, naked. I don't yeah. think he shows the hammer from what oh, I he heard. Apparently, he shows the dink. Yeah. Apparently shows okay. his wiener. I guess Not it's he impressive. He showed it like a thousand times. Yeah, dude. It, it must be muggy summer. where they filmed. <laughs> Little throwback humor there. And then we'll right. get to uh, Pierre Polyev's disastrous week. Uh, I can't be 
bothered with the culture of politics, but man, uh, it, he, yeah, that's he, what I've, I've known oh, about you. You sure shy away from the culture. About... Yeah. Okay. Anyway, we'll get to some right. embarrassing videos of Pierre Polyev next week. We'll do that tomorrow right here on the show. That is Lachlan Cross at Lachlan Cross on Twitter is where you can find him, find everything he does at the locker room, uh, YouTube page, locker room, merch page. You can go and support him buy a couple of, uh, articles of clothing, walk around feeling real good about yourself and Lachlan will feel good too. Uh, and of course he, and is always brought to you by our friends at Ardent Roofing Systems. Lock. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. And, right, uh, we'll see you. We'll see you tomorrow. All right, buddy. Talk to you soon. Ardentroofingsystems.com. Go there today. Sign up for the golf tournament. Stollery's Children's Hospital is what it goes to support. And they've raised tens of thousands of dollars for that beautiful institution. So there you go. Thanks to Arden Roofing Systems. And thanks to our other partners as well, including, but not limited to our friend Colin at uh, Cantorque. Cantorque makes rugged, hardworking torque wrenches. Canada's leading industrial tool experts, the very best in sales and service offering solutions under one roof. Thanks to our friends at Cantorque. Also, thanks to our friends. Go to Cantorque.com for more information. Muse Massage Spa. Hey, Torontonians, they've got a deal for you if you DM them. For many of their socials, they'll give you a big deal. It's called the Dean Blundell deal, and it'll be discreet, and you can go and try out their wares. Therapeutic as well. Sexologists, they've got a great podcast called Muse on the Mic. Patreon version's uncensored. You'll love it. Join their podcast on YouTube as well. Uh, again, brought to you by our friends at Muse Massage Spa, 1290 Finch Avenue West, Unit 13, Toronto, Ontario. Also brought to you by Gitch, engineered for any level of performance, as well as everyday life. Buy three, get one free. Uh, use promo code GITCH3 at checkout. Great underwear. The best. To be honest with you, boxer briefs pouch in the front. You'll love them. Can't miss with them as well. Uh, promo code GITCH3 will get you a free pair. Just pump it in on your checkout. There you go, friends. And all this core brought to you by factcheck.io. Uh, it is disinformation killing software, and they are ready to go. They've got a beta test they'd like you to sign up for. They want you to test out. They want you to try and break their software. A lot of people try and do that. They literally told me that yesterday. Yeah, yeah, we want people to join the beta test, see if they can break the software. We want to work out all the bugs. To test disinformation, origin, sentiment, and value. Doesn't matter where it's from. If it has a URL, they're going to check, give you the proper sources. If they're right, they're right. If they're not, they'll tell you that you're not. And they'll give you the sources to embody the actual truth that you're looking for. And then you'll be able to weaponize that as you see fit. <laughs> it's pretty cool. Join their beta test team if you would like to kill disinformation in Canada and around the world. Go to factcheck.io. Sign up for their beta program today. That's the best way to support them and uh, check it out. Their beta test is bananas. Bananas. Bananas, I tell you. Anyway, thanks, everybody. Appreciate you being here today. Uh, we'll be back tomorrow. Yeah, I'd say 3 o'clock. Yeah, I think we're back at 3 o'clock tomorrow. Don't forget to rate, subscribe, everything we do, uh, wherever you get your fine podcast, Dean Blundell Show on YouTube, Cryer Media on YouTube as well. Uh, anywhere you download your audio podcast, Google, Apple, Spotify, et cetera. Have a great day, everybody. See you tomorrow. Bye.